Hello everybody, my name is Jason Kigua from Saviors of Wildlife and in front of me or beside me we have got a special guest who is going to tell us about the ecological or biological roles of ground beetles. Before we proceed, let me welcome him to introduce himself. Welcome. Thank you very much. My name is Dr. Amadi Didule. Uh, from the College of African Wildlife Management in Mecca. I work as a lecturer and the head of the department of wildlife management. So, as it has been introduced, I will be talking um, on the ecological role of dung beetles. Dung beetles in the ecosystem play a major role in the cause of their feeding and the reproduction processes whereby they have to take the dungs, roll them and they bury them in, in the soil for them to lay eggs. Then in so doing, they are returning the nutrients to the soil. Actually, beetles are the main biological agents of decaying of the dungs, which are produced by uh, herbivores like buffaloes and uh, 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 wider beasts. So if you talk of the Serengeti ecosystem, for instance, the dance which are produced by wildebeest are mainly uh, decomposed, or the decomposition process is started by the beetles taking the dance and burrow them, and in so doing, then uh, they are returning the nutrients and the organic matter into the soil, which it is a very important uh, in the growth of pastures. So the quality, the productivity and the palatability of pasture in the grassland ecosystem depends much on the activity of the dung beetles. What will happen if the number of dung beetles decline? If the number of uh, 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 dung beetles decline, that means the process of nutrients returned to the soil in the process of dung beetles taking the dungs into the soil, then that process will be uh, uh, not effectively effective. So it is important then to understand the importance of the ground beetles for the conservation and the management of the rangeland ecosystem. The, I would like to talk about the, the diversity of these dung beetles to areas where the diversity is high and the areas where the diversity is low. So, what do you think about the decomp decomposition of these dung? Where you have a diversity, high diversity, we expect that dung beetles' activities will be high. And the being high means that much of the dung, which probably could stay for quite some time, in on the on the on the surface to be buried, but if you go to the area with less diverse of dung beetles, then uh, there will be less activities. Yeah, uh, we will want to know. Uh, probably it's a question, and we want to know that is the number of dung beetles dependent to the number of herbivores? Yes, of course. If you have less herbivores in an area, that means the dungs that are produced will be less. If they are less, then uh, the beetles will not have the dungs of which to use them for laying eggs for reproduction. So that means there will be a scarce of the dung beetles which are the resources for their reproduction. So in, in that way, then uh, the population of the dung beetle depends on the population of the herbivores. Yeah, Doctor, we've heard what you've said, but still we want to know more. Actually, we want to know your opinion, and more forward, we want to know actually in protected areas. As we know, there are many off-roading, people are actually, yes, off-roading. So does this impact to any changes in the diversity of dung beetles? Uh, on my opinion, I think the off-roading may probably have a less impact because most of the dung beetles will be buried down the ground. And uh, of course, 
as long as the off-road driving is not a kind of digging out to those dams which are buried down, then probably it might have less impact. But again, this might reduce the pasture, of which again, the pasture is the one which attracts the heavy boats to come to the area. So if the area is highly disturbed, yes, indirectly it might have impact because there will be a low quality pasture in those areas where off drive is quite often or it's severe and therefore the more less herbivores will visit those areas. If the less herbivores vis visit the area then it means that uh, there will be less dance and this might indirectly affect the population of the and beetles. Yes, mm. one more thing is that what is the variation between the number of dung beetles in protected areas and outside protected areas? Do you think the number is quite effective in the presence of a large number of herbivores or as compared to the areas outside protected areas? Uh, because we don't have data, probably we may not have the right to speak. But on my opinion, I think uh, the dung beetle, whether outside or inside, we said they are heavily depending on the herbivores. So if in an area outside the, 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 the protected area, whereby the livestock, like the cow, will be uh, many, producing many uh, uh, dams, then uh, this will also support the population of dung beetles, regardless that that area is outside. And of course, even inside the protected area, again, depends on the part, movement patterns of the, of the, of the uh, herbivores. Like in Serengeti, you have this uh, uh, migration of wildebeest, whereby millions of, of uh, or hundreds of thousands of wildebeest moving in areas. So they're producing much dance, and uh, these dance will produce, will, will support the population of dung beetles. But in areas where you have the animals uh, rarely visiting, then you might find that the population of the dung beetles is higher in areas where there are more activities of heavy birds than in areas where there are less activities or they are less visited. Effectiveness of the, I mean the dung beetles in areas where I mean in dry places and in areas likely to be the wet places. I would like to know the process of the decomposition of what is the variation between the two places in regarding the dung the beetle? The reproduction of the dung beetle will depend on a number of factors. One of them is the temperature of the soil and the, the moisture content in the soil. So in areas where you have high moisture content, then the beetle's activities will be higher as compared to the areas which are dry. So we are expecting that only during the raining season, when the soil is wet, it's where the beetles uh, can do their activities. And uh, remember, the dunks, when they are buried, and the beetles always lay eggs in, in, those, in those balls. And uh, when they, the eggs are hatched, of course that dung to, as food, and they will emerge out of those balls, and after emerging, they will remain in the soil until the time when the rainfall comes. So this indicates that in wet season or in wet uh, kind of environmental condition, it's conducive for the beetles to produce as compared to the area which is dry. Down here, partly the beetles have worked, have taken the part of it, buried down, and uh, this remaining part it may take some time to get decomposed. So it's probably if it rains heavily to break out the dung, it is when the nutrients will be released to the, to the soil. But here, you see that it's already uh, kind of decomposed. And uh, if you look at some of the patches, whereby you can see the difference. So there's where I said, the quality, the growth, and the palatability of the pasture 
you, you can see the quality of here and there. It's quite different. So you can see all the patches where the dunks were decomposed by the dung beetles. You will see the growth is different. And even the quality is look, looks, you know, here it looks healthy than here, as you see there. So it is important for the dung beetles to decompose the dunks. So as you can see here, this part of the dung might remain for quite some time. And especially when the, it dries up, then it, again it has to start decomposing when it rains. And again, this will take longer. But immediately as the cow or the cow or the herbivore gives out the dung and the beetles rolls the balls and the bury them, then that is the action of that easy the decomposition to take place. So the nutrients, the minerals and the, the organic matter are returned to the soil. And the beetles rolls the balls and the bury them, then that is the action of that easy the decomposition. Yes, Doctor. Before we wind up the conversation that we've been having for a few minutes, you as a conservationist, as a ecological expert, or I could call you the ecologist, somehow, what could be your general overview over this dung beetle? I think my general overview is that uh, sound understanding of the ecology of the dung beetle is very important. And uh, more research is needed because the beetles are not only important in protected areas, even in agricultural farms. They are kind of playing a role in the, the production of the crops. So we need to do research to understand where and how the beetle could help the, the production of the rangeland ecosystems and likewise in the agricultural areas. So research is very important to understand their ecology, to understand their lifespan, to understand their requirements in terms of conditions like the temperature, moisture, and so on and so forth. And again, with the interaction with the habitats. So if we don't have research, then we may not, or we may underestimate the role of the dung beetles. And we know that much of the research are done on large animals or mammals, but less probably is done regarding to the organisms like the dung beetle. So it is my call to the conservationists, to, to the agri agriculturalists, and also other people that might play the role to conduct research on dung beetle. Thank you, Doctor, for giving us your time. We will find you again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Once again, my name is Jason Kigura from Saviors of Wildlife and we just had a short brief, short talk from Mr. Ahmad Idule about the ecological and biological importance of dung beetles. Till we meet again next week, thank you, you're welcome.